So, Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, yo, you're welcome. And I'm so happy that you could do this. So now stay tuned, everybody. I am now going to introduce our next speaker. Her name is Holly Byers, and she's a passion coach. Holly is a bilingual, award-winning author, transformational speaker, educator, and freelance writer. Her topic is self-improvement through win-win communication. <laughs> How perfect is this? Uh, for the for the past 30 years, Holly has delivered motivational workshops on confidence building and proaction for Canadian women in business. In the health and wellness industry, Holly is dedicated to the recovery, healing, and self-empowerment through spiritual connection for trauma survivors, psychological discrimination, and sexual abuse victims, and those affected with addictions like physical disabilities and long-term illness. Holly Byers' writings has been featured in Canadian and U.S. newspapers, journals, and magazines. On the subject, um, on the, I just let someone in. Hi, uh, thanks for joining. Is writing has been featured in Canadian and U.S. newspapers, journals, and magazines on subjects of health, fitness, dance, music, makeup, fashion, family, and well-being. Her book, Go Girl, Launch Your Tiger, is a liberating and empowering your voice so you can kick ass. <laughs> Her book, Go Girl, is a step-by-step -step recovery and healing journey giving you the means to launch your soul's inner purpose and use the creative genius boldly and courageously in order to empower the realization of your dreams and actualize the life you were born to live through your spiritual connection and ability to love. Her contact info is www.launchyour with a Y-U-R tiger.com. Again, it's L-A-U-N-C-H Y-U-R-T-I-G-E-R dot -E com. Her email is dancepassion1 at gmail, dancepassion. So she sent me a, uh, because she's working, she sent me her 45 minute presentation, which I'm about to share my screen so you can all watch um, her preparation. And I hope this is going to empower you. So uh, oh, yeah. it's good. Speaker and coach through the arts and business. Hello, my name is Holly Byers. I'll discuss how horrific childhood struggles shaped my success as a five times internationally certified dance pro and makeup artist to the stars. Join me as I reflect on my challenges and triumphs and discover valuable insights that can help you enhance your own communication skills, enabling you to become self-empowered through win-win communication. Ideally in life, you want a few things, to express yourself, to be safe, to be well-nourished so you can be physically and emotionally strong. You wanna be fulfilled in whatever path you choose. And most importantly, you want to find your joy and be happy. I, however, was born into a dysfunctional household, one where my parents had alcohol and drug addictions, psychological abuse, hatred, and cruelty at its most terrific was our daily practice. As you can see, there are many types of abuse. Ours covered a few. I was incested by my uncle and mother and was sexually abused by mom's lovers throughout my teens and early 20s. Child abuse is frequent, but we really, really never know what's happening in the households next door or what the kids were at school with. In order to defer detention, uh, in order to defer attention from my mother's narcissistic behavior and infidelity throughout her entire life, mom had my sisters and I constantly in fighting. She would make sure that we were fighting all the time from morning to night, and this even con continued on well past her death. We actively hated one another. Hate was the only language that we knew. Our family was a war zone. The ammunition was hate and self-loathing. And I only found out after the age of 35 that I was a love child. I was born of my mother's lovers and lover singular that I was to blame for all the discord that was happening in the family, not only in my own, but in my biological siblings' family as well, my biological father. 
to my advantage and to mum's advantage, she had the insight to offer me dance and piano when I was seven. By the age of 12, I was gifted a scholarship for six consecutive years at Canada's top ballet companies, Les Grands Ballets Canadiens. And this was a real honor. Until last year, and I'm well into my 50s, I believe that I won the scholarship because mum fought for it, because we were dirt poor. This was the line she delivered to me over and over and over. Consequently, I thought it was her scholarship, and I never believed that I had won it on my own merit. This is the persuasive, pervasive nature of a narcissist, my mother. Mum literally inhabited my body, and I, me, my own self, only existed in my head. My mother had taken over my body through incest. I had but one dream, and that dream was to dance. I wanted to become a classical dancer, and by the time I was 13, I discovered that my Achilles tendon was contracting. Consequently, my beloved ballet school refused my re-entry. My orthopedic specialist that I traveled six hours to go to gave me six months before my tendons would snap crippling me and committing me to a wheelchair for life. What horrifying news. This was a very, very difficult time for me. I went through the most painful and agonizing surgery and post-surgery of my life. The drugs that were used to keep my tendons from snapping slowly made their agonizing, painful route through my muscles. And I was given these injections four times a day. They literally made me feel like I was losing my mind. And I can feel, I can feel the pain in my gut as I'm sharing this with you. It is still alive in me cellularly today. My only dream, my only dream that I could imagine in order to escape, escape my family's legacy for me, a dream that I had trained diligently six years for, was crushed. Intuitively, I knew that my dream to become a classical ballet dancer was crushed at this point when I went to the Wellesley Orthopedic because physiotherapy would cause me to lose a year in dance. Then I would be too old to be accepted into the ballet company. If that wasn't bad enough, after eight months of surgical rehabilitation, I was demoted from being in the professional dance program to a three-year teaching program. During those intensive years, I studied and had really, really specific examinations on three separate schools of dance, three levels of dance each. You know, I just lost my oomph and fell deeper into my depression. At that time, I was totally alone and without help. I couldn't turn to any family member because we were all nuts. My mother was totally self-consumed. My parents were divorcing. My sisters moved away. I was alone with my crazed, drug, sexaholic mother. Because of dance and my schedule, I had no friends or acquaintances anywhere and couldn't trust my teachers. I felt and believed that suicide was my only way out. You see, my background was shaping my life, though I didn't know it at the time. Throughout high school, I was dancing five nights a week and doing theater productions for 12 hours every Sunday and commuting four hours a day. There was no guidance counselors in the, our school at the time, and I had no one to turn to. I was alone. My body got weaker. I was desperately isolated and lonely. Even though I was a super achiever, my world was black. I didn't know how to get out of my downward spiral my mother was completely oblivious to me. Her only focus was feeding me and focusing on her life. I developed mononucleosis and literally fell asleep mid-stride in sub-zero temperatures while walking to high school. Because of my schedule, I didn't have time to do my studies, which caused me inordinate fearfulness and trepidation. My grades slipped, plunked math in my second year. I was literally a dichotomy. I looked great on the outside, composed model A and B student who always attended class and never acted out. I was bright and a promising artist. I had dance, music, and theater. The school was impressed. Uh, my high school was impressed. Everybody was impressed. But inside, I was anxious, physically getting so ill, coughing every night until I couldn't breathe. 
And then I had a nervous breakdown. I was literally engulfed in a bubble as if I were underwater. My ability to communicate with myself, let alone others, was impossible. I couldn't even hear my own voice. I believed I was going insane and I had no help, no way out. The prophecy of my family for me was that I would graduate high school and go into an insane asylum. It was coming true. During adolescence, when my sexuality awoke, I was guilt-ridden and panicked. I felt constant shame and humiliation, not knowing or understanding why. I wasn't safe with men or women sexually. I was a victim. All my memories of my past were shoved deep, deep within me, right into a place where it was so dark I couldn't remember them. I had to compartmentalize in order to do my day-to-day -day functions. I wasn't living. I was merely surviving. So my depression worsened. By the age of 17, I was blessed to graduate, become a three times internationally certified dance teacher and piano teacher. However, these were jobs that didn't interest me in the slightest. I didn't go to my grad. I didn't know any guys because I was so busy. I felt nothing. I was empty. And yet, by some miracle, I had early acceptance into university and studied theater, which would eventually save me. Theater taught me about communication, and this was my turning point. I moved from being disabled and dysfunctional into another means of communication. Up until now, I was a powerless wreck. However, I did have the intuition, the spiritual guidance from somewhere inside of me, and I chose never to do drugs or to smoke with my friends. That seemed to be a repetitive voice inside of me. Up until now, Source provided some sign, a person, a message, a bird who crossed my path, keeping me here, keeping me here on earth. Why? I didn't know. My mom was an addict. My father was a dry drunk, so I stayed far away from drugs. However, in university, I attended beer bashes occasionally. I remember being interested in guys who danced, but then I would feel this guilt and shame overcome me. I also experienced alcohol blackouts. Thankfully to a kind fellow, he carried me home on a few occasions and made sure, made sure I got into my apartment. Why? I don't know. I was clearly out of control. To lose control either through drinking, illness, or being victimized left me feeling and being powerless which absolutely terrified me. Being powerless is living in fear, being prey to all that fear is. And it also made me a victim. That was not going to be me. I had too much pride for that. Communication, what's that? What is communication? I was raised in fear, hate, anger, rage, envy, jealousy, self-loathing, cowardice, and oppression. Home was a totalitarian dictatorship. And I was emotional. I was an artist. And my father loathed me. Therefore, he treated me like a leper. Theater became my life raft. It taught me how to communicate with myself, the other actors, and with the audience or people beyond me. When there is hate, there is fear. University began a whole new chapter in my life. I began seeing and feeling life differently. I was more independent. There were less constraints around me. I felt like I could finally breathe and I broke free of all those constraints that I lived with in high school, in my home, and at ballet school. My inner voice kicked in much more frequently. I had a phenomenal theatrical coach who sat on the Canada Council for the Arts and she and I, thanks be to be, she and I clicked. The phrase, where there is fear, love, cannot exist. So let's determine what fear is because fear and love are at the very, very nucleus, the very heart of communication, how we communicate, to whom we communicate, what we communicate. So fear stems from ego. In theater, you're ta taught to go beyond your fear. You're also taught to not have an ego. Likewise, with dance class, when we were being coached or trained by our teachers, our professors, we were never allowed to talk back. We would have to accept them verbatim 
for what they were teaching us because they were the experts. And I learned early that we had to listen to them. And in order to perform, we had to go beyond our nerves. I had to go beyond my nervousness. I had to control the bile inside of my gut and to be able to perform. So theater was akin to my teachings in dance and piano, and I understood it well. So what is fear? Fear is broad. Fear is the opposite of love. Let's take a look at it. Fear is hate, fright, revulsion, terror, sadness, despair, intimidation, oppression, mistrust, jealousy, envy, paranoia, and dis-ease. The word disease comes from dis-ease, not being at ease in your own skin. Fear separates you from yourself, from your spiritual self. Fear, as taught through religion, places you far away from an oppressive and controlling God, which I never bought into. Fear creates war. Fear is ego. Now, ego can be good, but ego can also have this side that creates war within you and war without, war with others. Ego tells you, you are never enough. You're not bright enough. You're not thin enough, successful enough, rich enough. You don't have enough certificates on your wall. You don't have a fancy enough house. You're not young enough. Enough, enough. While in the state of fear, you have no spiritual connection. I'm not talking religion or any form of indoctrination. I am simply speaking of your spiritual connection. What do I mean? Communication begins when we love ourselves with a capital S, selves. We actively love our own divinity, our divine selves, the self that we were born as, as an infant. We are acknowledging through spiritual connection, the source of all that is, the source of our creation. However, fear creates disconnect. As you know, and you know, humans cannot create humans. Some other powerful energy source does that. And I'll use the term, I call it divine source or source energy or source love. In the state of fear, we are unable to communicate. We are non-functional. We are in reaction. We are non-functional within ourselves and with others. We are broken and unable to connect, which is why we need divine connection. For example, if I hated myself, it would be logical to state that I would hate others. And I hated life, correct? Correct. As a teen, love is communicating with yourself and the outside world. I did not learn that. I was in fear. I was in victimization from the time I was born because I was born of my mother's lover. Remember that. Consequently, I was the target for all the dis-ease, all the unhappiness, all the jealousy that existed in our family at the past. Consequently, when I was disempowered, I was also disconnected or unplugged from source of all that is, which is why I was falling apart. As I shared prior to this, my family communication was one of loathing, which in fact is fear, which is also disconnect. So now it's time to create a relationship with yourself and listen to your body listen to your emotions, and listen to your thoughts. And inside of you is your inner voice. If you listen to your inner voice, that is your intuition. That is the voice of source energy. Your barometer for your emotions is your body. If you feel any muscles that are contracted, then you're in a state of fear. If, however, your body is relaxed, supple, pliable, like a pussycat, then you are also relaxed and you can make contact with your divine self or with source. This is why some stop and seek out silence to think or what people call meditate. Meditate is simply thinking while you quiet your mind. Your inner voice is intuition. 
which is your divine connection. Divine connection is when you are giving yourself all that you need and that you go beyond survival to what I've always called as thrival. I coined this phrase decades ago because survival and thrival were polar opposites, like food. Think about it. If you eat junk food, you'll eventually have a coronary failure and digestive issues. If you eat nutritious food, then nutritious food gives you energy, keeps your mind sharp, keeps all of your organs and your nervous system and muscles happy and energized. So you can work longer, you can work out longer, you can you have you have much more stamina. Thus, by becoming still, your body, your mind, your spirit, and making contact with your inner highest divine self. You have divine guidance, guidance which is the best for you and all others. Let's take a moment and think about this. When spiritually aligned with your inner self and your highest calling, you are in a state of empowerment. What does this mean? Thoughts create emotions. Emotions create outer circumstances. You have control over your thoughts. You always have control over your thoughts because you're the only one inside of yourself and in your brain. Thus, if you can control your thoughts, then you can co control your life. Now, this is an entire cycle of communication. Your thoughts create your emotions. I'm repeating this again. Your thoughts create your emotions. Your emotions create your circumstances. Therefore, if your outer world is amiss or unhappy or chaotic, then so is your inner world. Now, I have to simplify this and make this a short presentation, so I'm not going to go into all the extended versions of this, which I do in my coaching uh, programs. Grasp this. Your thoughts create your emotions, which create your circumstances in life. So if your outer world is chaotic, then so is your inner world. Your outer world, the type of persons in it and the scenarios that you li live reflect your inner world. Life is a series of independent scenarios of communication. When you become conscious that you're here to learn something, then each scenario is a les lesson which raises your consciousness. In other words, we go from grade school to high school. We're learning lessons every year in all different subjects. If we pass those lessons, if we understand those lessons, we get a passing grade, then we move on to the next grade. Life is identical. As you learn your lessons, you become, you expand your consciousness. You expand your understanding of the world around you. Think of a baby. A baby is always reaching and touching and putting things into its mouth. Its mouth is the barometer of whether something is pleasant or not. In life for us, our barometer as we grow into childhood, adolescence, and adulthood is our body. So if our body is relaxed, then we are self-empowered. We can then communicate freely with the outside world and with ourselves and with source. As you learn your lessons, you become empowered. So look at this cross. You have lesson, 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 lesson. So you've gone to the store and you're in a bad mood. And uh, as you get to the cash, you're going to pay uh, for your milk. And the person behind the cash happens to kind of respond to you in a grumpy fashion. And you think that, oh, man, this is a real bad day. Then you're driving on your way home and you run into a nasty uh, driver on the uh, on the road back. And now it has compounded your day and now you're really in a bad mood. If you look at that scenario, you go out with negative feelings, you're in a bad mood, you're not shaking it off, then everything that you're going to run into will reflect what you're living at that time. So if you can shake off the negativity and say, oh, okay, let me go outside and breathe. I'll just go to the store and pick up whatever. And you smile at the person behind the cash. Then the person behind the cash smiles at you back. You are affirmed. You're feeling better now. As you get in the car and drive home, you might notice the sky and say, wow, it's a really beautiful sunny day out today. 
I'm so glad I shook this off. I'm so glad I'm outside because now I can breathe. And now you open up your shoulders and your chest raises and you get air down into your rib cage, right down into your diaphragm. You take a great big deep breath and you say, wow, that is what you need to do on a daily basis. If the negativity is there, shake it off. And as you go through your lessons, learning that as you present yourself positively to the world outside of you, that will then attract positivity back to you. So that's what we call win-win. You feel good, everybody around you feels good, and you evolve. So as we look through this, what is communication? We ask ourselves the question. My experience up until now is that and I say now in the present, has brought me to this deep understanding about the power of communication. So what is communication? Communication is one person sharing an idea, a feeling, a thought, and another person is, is hearing it. In other words, there's always a speaker and a listener. I have written here, active listener. We'll get to that in just a moment. What are the roles in win-win communication? Because there's communication and there's win-win communication. This is a threefold movement. The speaker shares his or her thoughts and waits for acknowledgement from the listener. The listener actively listens by being 100% present to the speaker, unlike high school golly, jumping. I remember in math class, I would just kind of tune right out, drift right off. Was I actively listening? No. But I got through high school because I was listening to every other subject actively. And because I didn't have time to study, I was learning my lessons through my ears, through visual connection with the teacher and the, and the chalkboard. And because I didn't have time to study, I was, I had already learned my lessons in class by actively listening. So it's a very, very powerful tool. Now, the speaker has spoken, the listener has listened, but the listener may have, has to acknowledge the speaker. So you might want to blink your eyes or smile or indicate in some physical gesture that you have heard the speaker. So now the speaker knows. Then as the listener, you get to ask questions or ask for clarification. This is very, very important. This is your right. The speaker then answers your question, clarifies, and then listens back to you for acknowledgement. In other words, has they have they explained it properly? Do they need to explain more so that you get, so that you understand the subject being talked about? This brings me to why communication is important to me. How did communication change my life? Up until the age of 28, I never spoke a single word aloud outside of dance class or music classes or with my theater friends. Literally not a single word. I never went into a store and asked for help. I never said I need to find uh, some shoes. I never opened my mouth. I was terrified to speak in case I made a mistake. My father drilled fear into me by stating, to ask is to be weak. Therefore, in school or elsewhere, I dared ask for help. The old adage worked for the military. He was a military man, but certainly didn't apply to me as a child. Before I learned to communicate, I could not connect with anyone or anything, even myself. As explained, I was a victim. As an adult, not knowing how to communicate my needs or deep, intense feelings to others, I bought several relationships in a way that was impactful and hurtful to others, not realizing I was doing it. However, once I learned healthy, sane way to express myself, I felt enormous relief. I could breathe again, my shoulders open, my chest open. I learned to express respectably respectfully through words, music, the arts, and in nature. My title is, You Are Here on Earth to Learn and Understand One Another. What does this mean? This does not mean that you have to agree to the viewpoints that someone sets out for you or expresses, but you might strive to see or comprehend another's perspective. In other words, 
put yourself into their life, their experiences, and ask if you ask ask yourself if you might act the same way in their circumstance. We look at war and we see people shooting other people. We don't know what is behind that. We don't know whether they've been victimized, whether their families have been threatened. And if they don't hold a gun against the country's enemy, that their own family will be shot and killed. We don't know the circumstances behind another person's actions. Therefore, I'm asking you to put yourself in the shoes of the other person that you're communicating with. Compassion, being sensitive to them is essential in communication. If empowerment is achieved through a state of mental, physical relaxation and connecting to spirit or source, then when you achieve this, you achieve control over you. Think of a ninja. What does a ninja achieve? Or how does a ninja achieve ninjahood? He or she practices over and over and over exercises every single year, year in and year out. So when you apply your guidance, your inner voice, that, that feeling that you have inside of you, then you are empowered by divine source, divine energy. So how can you become an effective communicator? Remember, firstly, all persons are equal. Be your unique self. Communicate whenever possible face-to-face -face so that people see your expression and hear your expression and your intention as it is meant to be, then you can avoid misunderstandings. I have lost so many relationships through texting. Text messages should not be for communication purposes because you cannot hear a person's intent. You cannot, you, it is so open to misunderstanding by the other source, emails, likewise, anything in written form. When I lost my friends and people that were dear to me, because they misunderstood me through text messages, I was not connected to source at these times. We want to avoid misunderstandings. So I want you to deal with people face to face, not stand beside them in text, but deal with them face to face. Always look into a person's eyes. The eyes are the window to our souls. You've heard that expression. Ground your feet. In other words, open your feet slightly. Relax your knees so you're in a state of flex. Be still inside of yourself and outside as you speak or listen. Be respectful of yourself and others and get straight to the point. Don't give them a big tralala story. Just go straight to the point. Be honest and diplomatic. In other words, be considerate of another person's feelings. If you were in their shoes and they were critiquing you or giving you feedback, you would want positive feedback or guidance, correct? You wouldn't want someone saying, oh my God, that was really awful. How in heaven's name did you think to do that? What were you thinking? That is complete fear, disconnection, anger. We don't want to touch that. However, if you're diplomatic, if you're considerate, if you're compassionate, you might deliver something that said, okay, well, that's really interesting. Perhaps another time you ex can explain it to me. In other words, now, from this point, you also need to use your intuitive radar. What do I mean? Attune your eyes to your listener. Are their eyes wandering? If so, stop speaking. They may be distracted or insincere for several reasons. Watch their eyes and body language. Are they flighty, fidgety? Are they scamming you? Listen to your gut actively. This is your intuitive radar, your gut. Keep your intuitive radar active in at all times. Are you in danger? If you feel that you might be in danger, either run or call for help from a viable source right away. Remember, your inner voice always tells you the truth because it's coming from source energy, from your highest self, and it guides you for the betterment of not only your life, but the life of others. I'm going to repeat this. Your inner voice always tells you the truth and guides you for the betterment of not only your life, but the life of all. Now, to also be an effective communicator and have win-win communication, never ever speak ill of somebody. 
Don't gossip about them. Don't bully them, disparage them, humiliate or inti intimidate anyone either publicly or privately ever. This disconnects you from source. It places you in fear, in anger. You will not win the respect of anybody by speaking ill at any time. And if you can control your thoughts, as soon as you have a negative thought, flush it out of your brain right away. Honor your word. When you promise something to somebody, deliver it. Just do it. You'll see this in life. Uh, in any circumstance, if you say, oh, okay, uh, let me look that up for you and I'll get back to you. And if you want to get back to somebody, usually it's within a short period of time, within 24 hours. But if you forget to do it, or if you think you're going to forget to do it, you can also ask the listener and say, you know, but I might forget. Could you just give me a reminder? If I haven't got back to you in two days, just remind me because maybe my agenda was too busy and I got too busy to, to think about uh, fulfilling what I promised you. So it's important to always say you honor your word. Walk your talk. This means respect who you are and complete whatever action that you say that you're going to do. This covers also cycles. Um, I'm not going to go into cycles in any deep form. In my coaching program, I talk to you about cycles and overcoming obstacles, which can trip you up. When we don't complete something that we say we're going to, this leaves an open cycle. And this drains your energy. And if you have too many open cycles, then you're going to have a whole lot of energy drainage. You know, you don't do your bed or you don't do the dishes or you haven't completed your studies or you said that you would go pick up uh, uh, the dog at the veterinarian for your friend. In other words, walk your talk, respect who you are and complete the action that you said that you would do now. We're going to move into a very interesting section here. This is called love consciousness. So what the heck is love consciousness? Sure sounds bizarre. Well, when you communicate purely through love and not your ego's intent, then you align directly with your spiritual or higher self. Interesting. Okay, that sounds easy. Being respectful of who you are on a daily basis Fulfilling your personal needs is being aligned with your spiritual self. This affects every choice that you'll make in life. Be aligned. In other words, if you happen to be tired and you don't want to go out to a concert with your friends and they're really pissed off at you because you say you're tired and you'd like to skip it, skip it. Listen to your inner voice. Could be that you just need rest or you need downtime or you need to be doing something other than being at that concert. So this is aligning yourself with your highest self. Respect what you feel inside is right for you. Now, did you know that when you give others an offer of an anonymous act of kindness, that your body resonates with joy for a longer period of time than when you receive gifts of kindness? It's true. It's been scientifically proven. Now, Love consciousness also covers practice love and respect with your inner wisdom toward all life, not just humanity, but creatures, birds, the earth, the works. Pollute less, be conscious of everything around you. If Mother Earth dies and she doesn't supply us with food source or protection or trees to make our homes. So your inner voice is your inner wisdom and vice versa. Your inner wisdom comes from your inner voice. So. Are you on the right track? If there's any form of contraction or stress in your body, your jaw, your gut elsewhere, if so, you're not on the right track. Or it can also mean that you're stressed psychologically about a something. And that's a something that you need to look at immediately. Stress, physical stress. In other words, this when you are stressed about something or you're not on the right track in life, you're doing something to fulfill the needs of your parents or your teacher or whatever, and you know that is counterintuitive, then you're not on the right track. For example, I had a coaching client who was a gang member, literally. He stole and scammed people for a living and was addicted to drugs, booze, lying, and controlling others. Through my coaching program, he turned his life around 180 degrees. He chose to change and become aligned with his higher self and with source. I had nothing to do with it. He came to me. The results 
wow, <laughs> wow. Now he is confident, composed, non-reactionary. When expressing himself to employers or friends or colleagues, it's a complete turnaround from who he was. When he came to me, he was over $100,000 in debt and being pursued by debt collectors and the government. He'd been living in his car. After completing my program, his esteem increased so greatly that he was able to secure a fabulous high paying job. Within one year, he paid back all his debts. Now he is attuned to his inner voice and makes healthy decisions which feed his soul, his mind and his body. Now he lets go of emotions and relationships which no longer serve his highest good and he knows when that time is. Now he is compassionate to those persons he despised in the past. Now he's interested in what others have to say and confidently communicates with others. He has become courageous and trusts himself and tries all sorts of new activities completely out of his comfort zone. He's filled with excitement every single day, enthusiasm about life, and is passionate about his every day. He, I hear it in his voice. Is he aligned with source? You betcha. He's on the right track. He had times when he was resistant to my coaching, so I had him get physical. Why? Getting physical ejects or channels the tension out of your body. I had him shrug his shoulders or breathe down into his diaphragm. And so today I'm going to give you some exercises. If you find yourself stressed out at any time, either when having to uh, deliver a presentation or having to speak up on your own behalf for the first time, or when you're afraid, this is what you can do. Now, I'm not on camera, so I'm just trusting that you'll understand. With your head, sit very tall, very straight. You can do this in a chair or standing or even in, well, don't do it in a car. Don't do it while you're operating any kind of um, any kind of uh, mobile uh, machinery. Sit straight, head up, jaw is parallel to the floor. Slowly turn your head to the right, come back straight ahead. Turn your head to the left and come back straight. By doing it slowly, you're just allowing the muscles in the back of your neck to stretch out and that way they will release any tension and come back. Now, you can try that four times. The next exercise is inclining the head. So look straight in the mirror, keep your chin in, in one place and with the top of the head, just lean it to the right by keeping the chin in center. Stay there just for a moment or so and let the muscles on the opposite side of your neck and shoulders stretch out and then bring your head back straight. You're going to now lean to the left, always the chin center, don't turn the head leaning and allowing the muscles in the opposite shoulder and neck stretch out and come back. Another great one is working the shoulders. Shrug the shoulders, bring them right up to your ears and let them drop up to the ears and drop and pull them up to the ears and drop. And you can do one at a time. You lift the right, drop it, lift the left, drop it and really let it drop. Let the whole exercise allow your shoulders to relax. Now, another one for the shoulders, this is good if you're sitting a long time or in a car a long time. You want to create a sh um, uh, uh, all movement in the articulation of the shoulder. So only move one shoulder at a time, bring the shoulder forward, up to the ear, back as far as you can and then down. Again, bring it forward, up, back, and down. The whole body is very still and only one shoulder is moving at a time. You can try that on both sides and you can even move that into a circle, circle it back, circle forward, down, center, up to the ear, back, and then down. And you can repeat shoulder circles, eight on one side, eight on the other. These allow the stress of the upper body to be released. 
Now, the last one is breathing. This is a gold mine for any time you feel stress. This connects with your nervous system and releases endorphins. You're going to, again, always keep the body straight. The head is high. The back is fully erect. You're going to breathe in for four, two, three, four, and out. Two, three, four, five, and six. Another way to go about this is you could shoot hoops, you can bounce a ball, you can bounce off a racket, you can take a ball and bounce it off the wall, off the garage, you can skip rope. If you ever find that you're really angry, you need a positive and sane way to release that anger, soak a towel, and now you can slap it against your bathtub. <laughs> Sounds odd. Take that towel and slap your bathtub and pull it back again and slap it. Now, because the towel is wet, it's going to be heavy and it's going to fatigue you and it will release all that stress and you'll have great satisfaction when you slap that tub with that wet towel. And the only thing you need to clean up afterwards is water. <laughs> Do this alone, the door is closed, or you could punch a pillow. These are healthy ways to release stress. If, on the other hand, you need to communicate something that is about deep emotion and uh, you're, you're angry about a situation, write it down. Write down what you have to say and keep on writing the text, polish your text until it starts to make sense. By writing it down, this gives the opportunity of channeling your emotions out of your being and allowing them to dissipate or dispel, getting rid of them. Releasing stress prior to communication allows expansion in the chest and allows you to get into your body and into your spiritual self. Call upon your spiritual self. Ask for help from your spiritual self, from source. Each of these tips that I've shared for you is most helpful in communicating with everybody and everything. While you're communicating with friends, family, teachers, or work colleagues, you will become so brave if you put these into action and so confident by using these tools and having them in your tool belt, you will begin to freely chat even with strangers and smile. Remember, if you are relaxed like a pussycat, you will naturally smile when you're looking in the eyes of somebody. You will feel compassion for them. You can put yourself into their shoes. And you can align with your inner voice and listen with your radar and your intuition to source and let that guide how you communicate with the people in front of you. Know that you are always empowered with spiritual guidance. Let's review. What is win-win communication? Being connected to you and to others through source. Source allows you to relax. Connect through love consciousness. Keep your uh, consistent eye contact, smile before you talk or while you talk, activate your internal radar. In other words, listen to what's going on and look and see what's going on around you. Put yourself into their shoes and be respectful, diplomatic and considerate and compassionate. Get to the point, no big stories here, just get to the point with what you have to say. Share with passion, whatever topic you're talking about, so that you keep the listener engaged and breathe. Try these on for size, have fun and play. Just go for it. Be the spiritual, distinctive, connected you. When you are your natural and authentic self, you emanate your divine essence. You are unique, and this is what makes you remarkable. Simply be your jubilant, distinctive, incomparable, fascinating, vibrant, or authentic self. This is enough. This has always been enough. You are divine perfection, as you are and every moment in your life. Thank you for sharing my journey and learning some tips and how you can become an empowered win-win communicator. I've enjoyed this. This has been fun. If you wish, wish to contact me, engage me as a speaker, or sign up for my transformational online program called Salsa Your Way to Success, email me at the present address. In the subject line, please write boot camp in caps so I know where we've met, and I'm looking forward to talking to you soon. Thanks very kindly. Cheers. Wow.
So did everyone hear that very well? I want everyone to unmute themselves. Oh, uh, yes, it was very uh, clear. It Was that not powerful? It was very powerful. I'm going to share something with you all. I asked Holly, I asked Rupro, who's online, she's going to be here tomorrow, Betsy. We did not talk to each other about what the topic was. We all just said, I just said, look, give me a presentation on what your topic is. Do you know that I started my presentation yesterday, Sandra, based on words, vibration, and communication? But Holly just blew me away. Betsy, also communication. She got, she talked today about how she got this in-house staff exhibit through the communication. You know what I mean? So I'm just sitting here going, wow, I did not know what Holly's presentation was until I started it today. Has literally found the words. And what she did is my, she's my win-win because I gave her the platform. Like Betsy gave a platform for her artists. I felt also this, that there are people out there, which I know all of them have very special talents to share. So by me starting this webinar, I fulfilled their message to the universe. I received it. She had it in her all along. I'm impressed. I mean, I'm like, wow. I mean, you... You, you know, you, you're focused. Her communication was very, very clear. You, you listen with true intention, very and proud. So very. everyone, oh my God, this has been really, I'm getting blown away. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow, I hope Sandra, you're going to be on. We have two more. We have Rupa from Germany, Rupa Knurl, and we also have Tania Canada, which is also both very powerful women, great information to share. So I hope you're going to show up. She, she's a very good speaker and uh, she keeps your interest for sure, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Everybody so far has done a fantastic job. Tomorrow is going to be even more fantastic. So I hope you're going to be joining us tomorrow. I will. I will join you spending, tomorrow. Um, okay. Our nine o'clock your time in Canada because we're dealing with Germany. So they're like, when we get international speakers, we got to deal with time zones. Carolyn, do you have anything to say? Ditto everything Sandra said. Wow. No, very, very powerful. You know, there's so many people, like Betsy said, people have so much to share. She wants to get her book done. Rupa's got a book. We're all getting our books done because, you know, it starts there and then they want more and we're all giving our own coaching programs. So next month, we're going to be having a health and wellness and beauty. So we're going to talk more about food. We're going to talk about what we put inside our bodies, what we put on our bodies. And, you know, again, communication, how we speak to ourselves and what we do to ourselves, loving ourselves more. It, 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 you, we, we want to discuss how everything it encompasses in order to get to where we need to go. We have to like evaluate our environment. We have to evaluate our partnerships. We have to evaluate what we put into our bodies because we are what we eat. So a guys, subject very close to my heart, and I believe Sandra too, right? Very oh, close. Right. Right. We, we have been working on this for years. Oh, good. So you and guys are always... really join us next month because next month it's all about food and beauty and wellness and Ayurvedic medicine. And, uh, I just feel quite proud at uh, 80. I'm 81 and I just took up dancing and at 82, I will be doing the performance. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yes <laughs> i thought of my nuts but hey very good for the coordination can we, can we see Memory. you it would be it would be a no, real I can't. honor to see you i'll have it fixed by next month <laughs> no or tomorrow you gotta have it fixed by tomorrow we need to see you <laughs> yeah we need to see you come on uh, you can put your makeup on whatever you want to do or have to do and just turn on the camera and let us see you it would be really privileged to see you well it's it's just something happened to this i um <laughs> laptop and i just have to get it fixed because i it's the first time i've had this problem <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god! Got me motivated. Eighty one, man. Oh, very inspiring. You, you guys are so inspiring. Not only Tina and all of you, I'm like at you as well. This is incredible to know. Wow, I'm very inspired. See, you know, stick with me, baby. I got up all up. Girl. They're coming in from all over the of the world. <laughs> the freaking magnet oh god oh you go girl
That's right. Okay. That's a okay, well, you see you tomorrow then. <laughs> okay. okay. We'll right. see you tomorrow morning. You guys, Carolyn, we're going to have to hear all about this. We want <laughs> photographs, we want pictures, we want videos, we want. <laughs> the world for sure, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, okay, you guys, thank you so okay. much. This is okay. great. And thank uh, you so much, Tina. You're incredible. Thank you so much. Tomorrow, thank you. Thank you. Rupa is speaking tomorrow, guys. Okay, we'll tune in. Okay, yeah, Canada. Tomorrow. Yay, I'm looking forward to you guys. Yes. <laughs> Night Night tomorrow, guys. Have an incredible day. Bye, -bye. Hey, everyone. Bye. Love you. Great Love you. Bye. <laughs>